Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Uh, this video I know you guys have been waiting for a very long time for. Um, non-stop. I've been receiving questions about my nose and I'm finally able to tell you guys am I one month of post-op? I believe I'm one month and three days in. Um, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> I have a lot of updates to tell you. My nose has changed so much. So first I'm going to be talking about my feelings and all that overall and then I'm going to be talking about the q and I let you guys ask me some questions pretty much they're all piercing related but I do have some very very good questions in there but let's go ahead and get right into it don't know I got a rhinoplasty done and it was purely just for cosmetic reasons no breathing problems whatsoever so keep that in mind when you're watching this video I have one video where I talk about why I got everything done and I have another video of literally me right after surgery and the recovery process. My doctor was Dr. Holden and I went to Arizona, Scottsdale to get it done. Um, let's go ahead and talk about me getting a doctor first of all because I feel like that's very very important and probably will be the biggest thing in this entire video. Um, I, <laughs> I have been looking for a doctor for like two years. I've been saving for four years. Um, and it's been crazy. I have gotten so many quotes from doctors that were insane. I have gotten weird, sketchy doctors and just all that. Uh, so I was very, very picky about a doctor because this is in the middle of my face. You can't get your nose done like a million times. Getting your nose done, you have to make sure that you're getting it done right at least the first or the second time. Thirds, to me, is kind of pushing it. Your nose is kind of a delicate thing. Um, you don't want to mess with it too much or else the body will be like, I'm just going to start throwing out chunks of flesh if that's what you want. So it's a very, very big decision and um I also talk about my first video why I don't get fillers I just there's so many sketchy things with fillers and flesh coming off even just from the first time of doing that and I didn't want to chance it and I would like something permanent I did not want to keep on going to get fillers which would add up to be the price of permanently getting it done so I said I'm just gonna save for it get it permanently done never have to think or worry about it ever again now I don't have to think about fillers and my nose falling off which is great. <laughs> I think that's worth it. Back to my doctor. Um, I first found a couple doctors in California. I wasn't really feeling it. I feel like the noses there were kind of just all the same. Um, you know, when they always get the same nose done, whenever the doctor, whenever they go to that doctor, it always looks like the same nose. You know, it's just like copy and paste kind of stuff. So I didn't really want to go to a doctor like that. So in California, Sorry. Also, if you like that style, that's completely up to you. It's your face. So do whatever you want. Uh, but this is just for my personal choice. California, I kind of saw that trend going on. And one doctor, I got quoted 20000 for my nose. So I definitely couldn't afford that either. Um, I do not have, or I did not have a simple nose. I started researching a little bit more, opening up to the entire country of America because if I'm going to get something this serious I need to be able to travel wherever I need to to really get it done and I came down to four doctors within the last two years and uh, one was in Maryland I got quoted 15k but he said that he wasn't able to do everything that I wanted which was a really big red flag for me never go to a doctor if you guys are seeing two different sides. You need to be seeing and noticing the same thing. It's very, very important. Uh, the other doctor was in Texas, which I got quoted for, um, I think 12,000, which is pr still pretty high, but that's kind of getting to the normal range of a rhinoplasty. And for my case, I kind of understood why it was that price. But another thing was simply just because Texas, um, the price really, really went up. And not only that, but traveling there would be a thousand dollars. That's just for flying. For staying there, I didn't even end up looking up the hotel prices at all because that's just outrageous. Not only that, but the Texas doctor was telling me that I needed to go see him in person, which I completely understand. Um, photos weren't good enough, but that was just for a consultation. I would pay a thousand dollars to get there. I would pay a thousand dollars to see him and then the two grand that I wasted maybe <laughs> 
maybe wasted, possibly could waste, is just there. Like, it would just be $2,000 to even see that doctor to see if I even want to get something done by him, which is crazy to me. Um, so I, I said no. I was like, that's way too big of a gamble. And even the lady on the phone was like, I can completely understand out of state. It's just crazy. Um, and then thankfully, <sighs> I found an amazing doctor, Mr. Holden in Scottsdale, where I just felt pretty much welcomed. Um, because usually when I go to places, I already have so much like going on, like piercings and such. So they treat you differently, obviously, which is kind of but it happens. And when I went there, everyone was really, really kind. And it was really funny. He called it my hardware. Um, and he was like, I know, so you have some hardware in there. Um, and I see what you want to fix. So I got my consultation over the phone. And I think like a week later, he called me and we talked about everything. He was very nice. He noticed that I do Twitch for a job. So <laughs> he was really, really kind. He was like, I know about Twitch. My daughter watches Twitch and we just talked about it for a while. So I was comfortable with talking to him just from there on because I am just nervous all the time. So it was nice that he went out of his way to make me comfortable. And that's a really good sign for me because that tells me a lot about bedside manner, which was amazing, by the way. Um, so another thing that he noticed, ethiosis vulgarius, uh, which is my skin condition, he knew what it was right away. And he was actually, he knew a lot about it and he understood that I needed to apply creams after the surgery, I needed to take care of my skin, and um, he just really, really understood. He was, he actually listened to me when I talked about piercings. I told him where it was, the placement, the anatomy, the structure, and everything like that, and he really understood. And, you know, I had my high nostrils and my septum done. He told me, yeah, the septum, we're probably gonna have to really do a lot of work to that. He was honest, you know, he didn't just do my nose, and it was like, well, now you can't get it done. Like, he told me multiple times throughout the process, like, you have to wait a very, very long time before you can get your septum done. So, that's not happening until a year. My high nostrils, um, I told him all about it. He even said, like, I messed with your nose all up in there. Um, but you can still probably put the jewelry in, which I'm not going to. Um, but he did tell me that, which is really, really cool. Um, so we were on the same page with a lot of stuff. And he made it very, very realistic. So he said, he noticed that the really harsh lines on the side of my nose, he said, I will be able to, you know, make them a little bit less harsh, but I can't get rid of them completely, which I'm completely fine with as long as it gets toned down, which obviously it is. Um, now that the swelling's down, I can kind of see the lines on the side of my nose, but it's really not as big as a problem as it was before, not even close. Um, so I'm very happy with it. And, you know, we just talked about everything. The one thing that I never really pointed out that he decided to fix brought up the fact that he wanted to do a slope. Some people prefer the straight and some people have the slope. Um, I wasn't really thinking of getting a slope done to my nose, but I'm really happy that I went with his recommendation because for what he was doing with my nose and the rest of the structure on my face, a slope was the best decision, so. Thank God he recommended that and thank God I went with it because I think the slope is probably my favorite part of my nose now. For Dr. Holden, uh, he quoted me around 9,000 and you know, a little bit extra fees because that goes for the surgery, um, anesthesia, and the aftercare products. I think you only have to get like two or three things for aftercare, uh, but he does provide a lot for you. He does cleanings, uh, he does checkups. There's a lot that they provide for you. So. For me, it wasn't a lot. I know 9,000 sounds like a lot to people, which it is. It is a good chunk of money. But when someone cuts open your nose, lifts the skin, and goes in there with tools, and puts it back down and sews it, you need to really, really be careful. It's a serious thing. It's very big. Out of the entire process, the biggest thing to me is picking the right doctor. Going through surgery is actually nothing in my opinion now that i'm healed up a month and i've gone through the surgery i recorded everything yeah i got dizzy and i got nauseous but picking a doctor is the most important thing you could do in the entire process so really think about it <sighs> sorry <laughs> i'm like so out of breath because i'm trying to i don't know i don't know why i'm so out of breath because i can breathe through my nose 
I feel like I just got used to not breathing out of my nose that I have to just remind myself to breathe through it, which is interesting. But yeah, <laughs> there's just so much that you can do for it. But I feel like those three are the most important consultation before and after photos and making sure you guys are on the same points. Really, really do that. Um, to me, location and the price, I knew that I would just have to work my way to it. If I fell in love with the doctor that was at 12,000, I would just wait a couple more years, to be honest. I would really wait just a couple more years, <laughs> but that's just me. But you can always look around all the time. You know, you can have a doctor that you love for like two years and then keep on looking and then you find one that's more in your range and you actually love them. Now for recovery, I'm not gonna be talking too much about that, but there's a couple things I do really wanna talk about. If you go to Holden, he also brings up these to you. So um, this isn't just, I feel like most doctors know about this. Arnica, there's two types. There's gel and then there is a pill. I took the oral, the oral pill. So that you just put on your tongue and you let it, you do that like a week before and a week after getting surgery. And I feel like it did a good amount for my swelling. I didn't even swell up that bad. I was expecting myself to be absolutely terrible. Um, just knowing myself and swelling, I swell up quite bad. So to be honest, it really wasn't that bad at all. There's people out there that look like they got in an accident and it's very extreme. Um, I will be talking about that later but we're gonna go ahead and talk about swelling and aftercare bud. So Arnica is the thing. The gel, you're not gonna be applying that, you're not gonna be applying anything to your nose, but the gel, I have used that on my ear point. Very, very, very good for bruising. The gel is so good, I love it. Um, so I would say like, once you get your cast off or something like that, if you have some bruising under, just put some of that Arnica gel and it would vanish like within a couple days. Um, somehow this breaks the deal for some people, which I don't completely understand, but you do have to sleep upright. So that means with like four pillows behind you and you're just sleeping upright for, I wanna say like three days, you're not really used to it, but I had to do that for at least two weeks or three weeks, I kind of forgot, two or three weeks and you get used to it by then. Uh, one random night, I was like, oh yeah, I don't have to sleep like this anymore. So I completely forgot. You get used to it. But if you want to get a neck pillow, like an airplane pillow, I highly recommend getting that. The biggest, <laughs> to me, the biggest and most important thing in the world for aftercare that they don't really tell you about is dry mouth spray. So important. Um, definitely pick it up. You just spray it in your mouth and it's like synthetic saliva. It sounds so gross and so weird, but when you're breathing through your mouth at the time, all the time, like it just gets dry and sore and it could crack and bleed and just, ugh, you don't want any of that. So I bought that right away, sprayed it the first night and I was fine. Um, my lips did get a little bit weird, um, but I really couldn't fight it too much. If you have like Vaseline, just smother your lips in it and just be like some weird like <sighs> soppy mess or something like that. <laughs> and then sleeping with my cast on. This was probably the weirdest thing to me. Um, I wasn't expecting it. I know some people like tape up their nose and everything, but they actually gave me a cast that was shaped to my nose. And they said, just put this on and then put tape on it and go to bed, which honestly isn't a big deal. They told me only to do it for three weeks. I would have done it for like a month. It's really, really not that big of a deal. Just sleeping with a cast on, like you can't complain about that. Um, but I thought it was really cool. And it honest, it made me feel a little bit more comfortable sleeping. And cause you know, when you're sleeping and like, what if you sleep on your nose and then it just like ends up like going all over the place. <laughs> and just like, cause it's very flexible at that time. At the early like stages of it, it's very flexible, but it'll start to like harden over time and you'll feel it harden too, which is very weird. Um, but the cast makes sure like everything just stays put. So I really love that they gave me that, but only for three weeks that I had to sleep with it. And literally <laughs> the last day, I broke it. <laughs> Which they tell you, they're like, keep it safe. Do not break it. Don't sit on it. Don't, don't do any of that. And I was sitting there and I was telling Alex, I'm like, yeah, that was the last night that I had to sleep with it on. And then I, I was trying to get some tape off of it and then like, some of it came off and it started bending it and I was like, oh my god, thank god it was the last day and I'm so sad that I broke the cast because I kind of wanted to show you guys. <laughs> yeah, some doctors will give you a cast, some will tape up your nose, and some of them will give you nothing, so. 
that's everything that I have to say really other than some of the emotional stuff that I'm gonna bring up. So here is my nose one month. Yes, it has makeup, but I also have clips of me without makeup. So here it is straight on, 45, to the side, 45, to the side. And then up, which I'm going to be talking a lot about the up angle because there was a lot of comments about that in the last one. And then straight down. Smiling. Let's get into the emotional side of everything. I I am absolutely in love. There's nothing negative that I have to say about any of it. And it was one of the best decisions ever. Um, there are some things I definitely want to talk about. Because I have been talking about this for a month straight now with people. And there are some very big points I want to make. Uh, when I got surgery done, and I talked about this in my first video, there's a lot more that goes into it mentally than physically. Um, usually before you get surgery, I like to be in a mental place where I know for a fact I don't need this. This is just something I'm choosing to do. I need to go into this realistically. Nothing is perfect in life, okay? And you're not going into this to become perfect. You're just doing this to improve, but not perfection. Because I feel like a lot of people are going there to be like, it has to be perfect. But you have to realize that the human face is a lot. There's a lot to balance. This is going to be a little bit weird, but I'm going to point out a lot of thing, a lot of things on my face. And you guys are probably going to like see it forever now. Um, but yeah, it's basically like cut in half. One side is higher and the other one's lower. I think this one is softer and then this one's a little bit more harsh. My lips do not align with my nose whatsoever. They do not line up at all. Um, my lips do not line up with my septum. My septum is here and that is like right on the tip of this lip. When I got my lip piercings done, I went, I lined them up with the top arrows of my lips. So that's why those are just like straight on. But if you line up my piercings with my nose, they're off. On the consultation, he already noticed it. And he said, I'm going to match the right side of your nose to the right side of your face. So that way it's not like, it doesn't look off. You know what I mean? It just kind of works with the rest of the face. There's a lot of balancing that goes into this. Also, when I smile, one side, my lip goes up higher. Uh, when I talk, one side goes lower. So, you know, the face, it's not perfect. And you just have to realize that and you really have to come to terms with it. Plastic surgery, I do not feel like it's just there to perfect things. And I think that's when it becomes like a very toxic mindset. Um, but that's just me personally. That's how I feel about it. If you disagree with that, that's perfectly fine. It's just an opinion, but I think that's all I'm going to say about that. The next point I want to get into is the emotional feelings that you get after surgery. So the hardest part, 100% is the swelling day three and day, day two and day three, the swelling is so bad. You don't look like yourself. You don't feel like yourself. You don't, you can't bathe, you just got out of surgery, you're groggy, you're nauseous, you're dizzy, you know, it's just, it's just such a bad time. And then you sit there and you're just like really thinking about what you did and what you got yourself into. But once it's over, you're just like, that wasn't even that bad. I was just being dramatic, but it's a lot. If you think about it mentally, just not seeing your face when you look in the mirror, it's so strange and I can't describe it. I do want to talk about a couple other times after because, you know, the swelling and all that, once you start to see your actual face again, it goes away. Um, but I think there was three times now where I would look in the mirror and I was just like, like, what? Who is that? Like, because <laughs> it looks like me, but it, it's, there's a change, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just, it's so strange how to describe it. You see yourself, but the best way, I really feel like I said it correctly the first time, like, 
it feels like a family member or like a twin or something but like the twin doesn't look exactly like you and it's just so strange the most recent one is when we're out for food and i didn't have like any makeup on basically we we're just out relaxing getting food me and alex and i saw myself in a mirror and i was just like there's just something so off i know that's me but what am i looking at and it was so weird and then like but I realized that I was looking at just the nose and not me as a whole. Because when you see me as a whole, then it's perfectly fine. But it's so weird. It was just that one instance where I was like, what is this? That probably sounds really dramatic, but it wasn't that intense. It was just like a split second of like, like actually shocked. Um, but it, you know, I've just been so fixated on my nose lately that that's all I see. The other time that I looked in the mirror and I was really taken back, but it was in a good way, was right when I got home from Scottsdale. Right when I got home, I was like, I'm taking a shower. <laughs> like a full on shower, because that's all I wanted and that's all I needed. So I was like, I'm gonna go in the shower and just, oh, I'm gonna live in there. So when I was getting ready, um, I was like putting some, some hair treatment in my hair and I was putting my hair up and when I saw myself with my hair up in my nose, I was like, oh shit, she looked good. <laughs> I was just like so into it. it was, oh, I was just so happy about it and I am still really happy about it, but I really felt myself in that moment. I was like, oh, she looks so good. She looking cute. Like, I don't know. I, it was, it was a good moment. So there's like strange moments and there's very, very good moments. Um, there's some, sometimes I look at my nose in the mirror and I'm just like, mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. Um, but it definitely has toned down because I'm getting used to my nose now and I it's just a nose so yeah but there was some moments where I was really feeling myself <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the one of the questions which is the first video I made the recovery video where I showed the results of my nose uh, everyone could see that it was kind of going to like a, at an angle now we're really gonna have to get into this like I was talking about earlier there's a lot of balance to go with the face. So, I'm gonna get all up in your face. I really do think that my nose is perfect right now uh, because first of all, <laughs> my lips don't even line up with this. So, yeah, I'm not even gonna take that into consideration. Um, my septum wasn't really straight to begin with, but he did fix it to the point where it looks straight in the front, which is the most important to me. And if I angle it to the point where people want it to be, like from if you look up, I would assume some people would be right there. You can see that it would be at an angle straight on. And I would much rather have it be straight from this angle than this one. Cause like, who's gonna look up my nose? <laughs> Nobody at all. Like literally, I don't really just like shove my face and you know, I don't do that. So 100% happy with it don't need to move it. Um, he, when he saw the photo of it, he did email me and tell me, hey, I need you to do like a couple massages throughout the day because in the, like I said earlier, first couple of weeks, it's very flexible. So I would just like massage it just on the side, pushing it to this, to the right. Massaging the left side, pushing to the right. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, a reminder, this isn't to be perfect. This is just an improvement, which this is 100% improvement. And having my nose like this, my breathing is actually better. It's full of snot right now. I do want to talk about that. It is full of snot right now, <laughs> uh, but it is better. When I can breathe through it and there's not like a million boogers out there, uh, it feels, it, it's great. It's really, really good. Um, even though he made my nostrils smaller, I know someone asked about that. Since your nostrils are smaller, is it harder to breathe? It is not. Now this is only one month in. There's still a lot of swelling going on. So, I, I probably still have some boogers up in there. I can breathe through both of them now. And I definitely have some boogers up there. Um, speaking about the boogers, uh, I, produce a lot. <laughs> I have to clean my nose multiple times throughout the day or blow my nose multiple, multiple times throughout the day because boogers are coming up a lot, which is understandable. Usually when you have a lot of, when you have an injury to an area, your body's just going to react that way. So it's just producing a lot of snot. It's getting back to normal and I'll slowly regulate. Um, my skin is also back to normal on my nose, back to being dry. It was oily for like 
two weeks and then it stopped. So one of the questions is, what piercings are you planning for your new nose? I know I, you touched this on the first video, and, but now that it's done, it's easier to visualize and can, when can you pierce it? I can pierce it a year, like a year later. I can probably mess with the high nostrils earlier since he really didn't do much with it, but I don't want to. Not at all. I wouldn't even want to pierce it until it's until the swelling's completely gone. I have said this so many times, so please listen. I'm not going to pierce my nose for over a year because the swelling. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, if I pierce it while the swelling's still there, when it's when the swelling goes down, the piercing will be angled or wonky. So literally not gonna touch it for any of that time. I am gonna probably put some like, probably gonna glue some jewels on my face for fun, just to test it out. Um, I do want three on the side and my septum back for sure. And that's kinda all I have planned for it. Jewelry, style, gems, color, all that stuff. I have not decided that is whew, such a big decision. How is Alex adjusting to the nose? I feel like it might just be a little bit weird or different for him to see a whole new nose. Okay, so this one we talked about recently, me and Alex and <laughs> It's so funny. It's not that I have a new nose. Like he definitely likes it. He thinks it's cute and everything. It's not the fact that I got my nose done. It's the fact that I don't have piercings or jewelry anymore on my nose. And it's so weird. And I completely agree with him. Like when I look at my face, sometimes I like see it. And I'm just like, ugh. no, there's no jewelry on it. But I love the nose. Like I like the base. But I don't like the decor, you know what I'm saying? Like the decor, I ain't feeling it, but the base of everything, it's all good. It's all real good. Did your sense of smell change? Not necessarily. I know some people lose the smell, which will change how food tastes. Um, I can't smell that much. I can only smell something if it's like really, really strong. That's the only time I can smell something. Um, but it's it's like slowly coming back to me so but it's also might be because my nose is kind of full of boogers all the time right now so <laughs> can't really tell ya <laughs> have you changed your makeup routine and not only just your contour if that makes sense uh, also how does your skin feel with your ichthyosis so my skin regarding all that completely back to normal good after like two weeks because uh, I was really 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 babying it um, and then also my face I had a lot of acne um, I'm a little bit stressed right now, so I have acne again, but at some point it was all clear and good, but yeah, it's not right now, sad face. But um, for my makeup routine, everything's the same. For contouring my nose, I actually don't know how to contour it. Um, I, yeah, I actually, yeah, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm completely lost. <laughs> With this shape of nose, I'm so lost on what to do, so yeah, you'll see it change throughout time. <laughs> How's it going with the scarring and the healing of your high nostrils? When are you planning to get them redone? Uh, like a, a year. And they will be different because there's going to be three, so the placement's going to be changed. But the scars, you can see them right there. The scarring, one, two. The septum one is completely gone. Like, it's not even there. And then the two on the side, they're not really like holes anymore. They're just like, like little divots in the skin. And that's about it. Um, the scarring up my, up my nose. Uh, this one, when I have makeup on it, I feel like it's a lot more noticeable. But to me, it doesn't matter too much because, I mean, when I get my septum pierced, the jewelry's gonna hide it anyway. The scarring on this side's doing very well. And then this side, it's still doing really, really well. But I just need to baby that side a little bit more because recently I itched my face and it felt terrible. So. I need to not do that. Can you wiggle your nose? Um, I actually just really like this question. It was interesting, but it's quite solid. Um, the first couple of weeks, it felt all like mushy and <laughs> like weird like that. But now it feels hard. Like if I touch Alex's nose, it like, like my nostrils, it goes in, like it's squishy if I touch his nose. But like my nose, it's literally hard. Not to be too much into your business, sorry if it is, but did the surgery affect not safe for work play? So all that good time. Um, that time does count as cardio and exercise, so you have to be careful during that. If you guys get a little bit extreme, make sure you keep that in mind. You're not supposed to be working out for some time, but that's with most surgeries. You have some downtime. Um, but since you can't breathe, anything that has breath play, maybe any kind of like 
edge play or anything like that, you might want to be careful, you know? Um, but also, I feel like right out of surgery, you need to just avoid anything with the face if you get your nose done. Are you going to stretch your septum after piercing it again? I'm actually not going to. I literally only stretched my septum because I was bored. Um, it was just like a little fun thing to do for me. <laughs> um, it wasn't really for the looks. So I was just like, oh, okay, we'll go up the size. Why not? I'm not babying anything right now. I'll just baby something right now, you know? Um, but yeah, I don't think I will ever do it again because I'm actually starting to fall in love with pieces that don't require a stretch septum. Um, I do like the stacked look but you don't have to stretch your nose to get a stacked look. So I'm kind of looking more towards like the BV BVLA where the pieces look stacked and everything like that. That is everything. All the questions that were basically asked. I do want to have another reminder that I have a video saying why I got it in past surgeries and a video of recovery. So if your questions weren't answered, it's because I probably already have videos on it. I believe that's everything. Thank you so much. Um, for the support and I thought this entire situation was gonna be so stressful and intense But it wasn't it was actually really really great, and I just want to say thank you for that um, You guys are absolutely amazing and super supportive and I don't know I don't know. I'm getting emotional, so I'm not gonna say too much, but I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the videos that I'm coming up with next and I still have videos of other body mods that I'm getting done this year to do so I hope you guys have a wonderful day and journey, and I will see you in the next video.